Hello, and welcome to our second episode of Conversations for the Soul, One Good Sip at a Time with Angie Gray and Yashika B. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to take this opportunity to just give you a heads up about our show. Our show is one where we dive into some tasty conversations. Some of them may be sweet, but unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, some of them may be quite savory. So we just want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us. If you have questions or you want to join into the show, please be sure to post it in the chat box. Post your questions in the chat box or your comments in the chat box. We'll be very happy to discuss those with you during the show. And then also we want you to know that we are dealing with real issues here, real talk from real women. And we want to be able to just keep it real here, be able to show our concerns about various issues and to discuss them in a way that we don't have to feel like we have to be someone else. We want to be able to just be ourselves. So we thank you for joining us. And if we don't have your permission for that, then we ask that you <laughs> not bother because we sometimes things are going to get kind of real. That's true. Just yeah. like the technical difficulties from tonight because we are behind schedule. However, hey, it is what it is. Let's, we keep rolling. Yes, it is. So we were, will be here every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So a couple of things that we just want to put out there right quick is uh, I want to wish a happy Founders Day to the following fraternities and sororities who have celebrated Founders Day this month in January. So we have on January 5th, Kappa Alpha Psi, January 9th, Phi Beta Sigma, January 13th, Delta Sigma Theta, January 15th, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Ski Wee, <laughs> and then January 16th, Zeta Phi Beta. So happy Founders Day to all of my frat and all of my sorors and to all of the wonderful fraternities and sororities of the Divine Nine, whether you're celebrating a Founders Day or just being you. God hey. bless you all. <laughs> I have to interrupt you. Why did you do that extra? That's not like you started a little favoritism to a somebody with a skew. What was that? What did you, what did you do with favoritism there? Because that's the only one I'm allowed to say because I'm an AKA. So, oh, oh. <laughs> what was that little noise you made? Do that again. <laughs> Ski wee. Okay. <laughs> okay. I heard it live in person with Angie B on that one. Yes. So, another thing that we want to take this opportunity to to do that we would be remiss if we did not share is a very happy and special heavenly birthday to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So at this time, we are going to turn the microphone over to Dr. John E. Gray, who has a moment that he wishes to share with us regarding Dr. Martin Luther King. Hey family, how you doing? This is Dr. John Gray, um, AKA the Professor of Positivity. And I thank Angie and Yashika B for giving me a moment during their platform to simply pay homage to one of the greatest statesmen, orators, and harbingers of peace that this world has ever known in the person of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Sadly, he lost his life before he was 40 years old. But in his 39 years, his life so impacted the world that this world will never forget his name. He was, in his own words, a drum major for peace. And he saw the mountaintop. There's a scripture in the Old Testament involving Joseph and his brothers, where Joseph had a dream and his brothers were jealous and they wanted to kill him. And he said, behold, here comes the dreamer. Let us slay him and see what becomes of his dreams. That's what happened with Martin Luther King Jr. Those who are the bringers of hate, those who are racist, those who live for division, they said, behold, here comes the dreamer. Let us slay him and see what becomes of his dream. 
But what they did not know was that with the Lord being our helper, that dream is alive and well. And not only that, there's still so much more to be accomplished. Because as my friend That's Gary Melton's t-shirt says, Angie and she did. we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. And it is because of people like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the life that he led, the life that he gave, and the legacy that he gave <laughs> left behind. Thank you so much, Angie and Yashika B, for this moment to celebrate and honor this powerful man of God who impacted the world through the power and the resilience that God gave him. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. John Gray, for sharing that with us. And it just brings us into something that I would just like to just look at for a minute, considering how we have been, when you mentioned about the hatred and, and the, um, in the world today, we have been, have been experiencing something that I wonder myself, what do you think, Dr. Angie? What he would say about what's going on today with the inauguration coming up in a couple of days. How do you think he would actually, I know we don't know for sure because he's gone and we didn't know him personally. However, knowing what you know about his legacy and, and what um, Dr. John just read, and, and I understand that he studied him a great bit back in, in his college days. So tell me, what, what do you think? What do you think? Um, to be honest with you, I believe that he would find it to be bittersweet find it to be sweet in the fact that we have our first woman of color to be in the White House to, and shout out to Kamala Harris, who happens to be an AKA. Uh -oh. So I think he would find that to be pleasing. What he would not find to be pleasing is the fact that the country is in an uproar now mm -hmm. with these proud boys and white supremacists and all of these people who are actually stealing the moment of the inauguration while they have wrongfully accused us, accused Biden and Harris of stealing the election, they are truly stealing the inaugural moment. The moment of, that should be celebration. It should be a peaceful transfer of power. And it has not been, it has been, it has, brought the country to one of its darkest, ugliest moments. And I believe that Dr. Martin Luther King would really find a real problem with that. He would not be pleased by that outcome, but he would indeed, in fact, be pleased of the progress that we have made. While it has been slow, it has been steady. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? I agree. I, I don't think... But he would as, as happy or as pleased with what has happened over the within the last, I would say the four last four years. It has definitely the, the last week or so here in our nation, especially at the Capitol. And to see that we talked about that um, briefly last week about the Confederate flag being placed in the White House as well. I hear feedback. I need to, um, yeah. I think it was me. I think it was me, Yashika B. Sorry about that. That's okay. I think it's a, it's a little echo now. I think that may be the volume of, um, in one of them. But that's okay because that's that's the beauty of live, right? <laughs> yes. At least people know we are live. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That is so correct. We are live. I and one of the things that I was uh, a taken back that we talked about a little bit today was when I thought about the reasoning behind what we're doing. When you say we stole the election, but then say that statement again that you said it stole the election, but they're saying we stole the election was stolen. But what did you say behind that? I said they have accused us of stealing the election, mm -hmm. but they have in fact stolen the inaugural moment. They have stolen the inauguration from the moment. The, the, the happy celebratory moment mm -hmm. has been compromised because of the lack of willingness to have a trans, a peaceful transfer of power. Right. And that is a very sad situation in the history of every election, no matter what, we have had a peaceful transfer of power. Mm -hmm. And to have this go down like this is not a good look for our country. Right. 
the other powerhouses of the world, the global society, they're watching us and they're making a mockery out of us. We have made a mockery out of ourselves, mm -hmm. in my opinion, mm -hmm. because we have not followed suit like we are supposed to. Mm -hmm. Once we are done, we're done. We're supposed to pass the baton and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that hasn't happened. That is true. And one other thing I was I wanted to add to that when as I thought about our soldiers and sailors and especially the soldiers that are there at the White House having to um, they beefed up the security of course they have the National Guard deployed there and I thought about the fact that okay if we are according to the supporters if you are so patriot you're such patriot um, patriots to the United States but you don't care about those soldiers who had to leave their homes to undo to try to undo which is not going to undo because the stain is there to, but to protect and and for peace here on our own soil because yes. and not from enemy this is domestic yes and, and i mean if you are right if you're storming for what for what is your purpose now that this has happened now we've had to deploy american troops to keep peace on our soil on our soil against our own people that that just wasn't out to me it just wasn't it doesn't pass the common sense test <laughs> to be honest from the organizers and whom and, and the way i agree who, with you definitely not it, it just it just doesn't it pass absolutely it. no sense whatsoever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the other piece to this is i just can't get the image out of my mind of how the country carried mm -hmm. on so badly and poorly when colin kaepernick took a knee oh wow it's just unbelievable that we had such disdain and such distaste for that act of protest, mm -hmm. but then to allow this insurrection to take place and believe that that's patriotic, it's just beyond my comprehension. Absolutely. Still just outdone about it all. The flag, the the knee with so much disrespect and yet we're hanging it, we're wrapping it, we're rolling it, we're doing whatever we can and then taking it down to place another flag up. So, I mean, what does, what does a Trump flag mean? Exactly. And that more disrespect? as okay. opposed to our nation. Mm -hmm. And that is a bad look. We should never be showing our loyalty to a person to that extent where it extends beyond the nation. That's just, that's bad business. Now, as a veteran, you you are a veteran. Mm -hmm. So speak to that in terms of the issue of respect. Tell us about respect as far as what Colin Kaepernick did and as far as what you have seen the past since January 6th with regard to this uh, insurrection. What Colin Kaepernick did and others, it was, it was never a disrespect. It was disrespectful when people put disrespect on it because peaceful protest is a part of the fabric of America to make change. Mm -hmm. And it has been a part of the fabric of America. And what he did was simply took a knee. Pull her up by herself. People kneel to pray. That's in peace, right? So therefore, I just don't understand why we took it to the next to the next level as they did to say it was so disrespectful for him to kneel, so disrespectful for other um, ball players to kneel or take a knee, and then the the rhetoric that came behind it that they just need to play ball or whatever. But I don't hear all that rhetoric behind the so-called patriots who stormed the, the the Capitol from the same people. So what it did, and and ask in in reality, it just showed us that. We are so one-sided and so very much separated, divided when it comes down, comes down to just human decency, common sense, and respect for one another. You don't have to agree with me, but you can respect me. You don't have to like what I like, but you can respect me. And I believe that we've somewhere in America, we lost that, that whole thing to understand that we are different and it's okay to be different we don't like the same things if we did we would just be one clone who wants to be cloned and as far as the military goes on that aspect the 
entire, I mean, most average citizens disrespect the flag with your everyday 4th of July, I said not everyday, but your every year 4th of July celebration, what you do with the flag. But we don't talk about that. And as I mentioned before, I my son played football in high school. He's been playing since he was in the fourth grade. How many times during the national anthem playing that we don't sit down, we don't, we talking, we doing everything we want to do. But all of a sudden, when someone takes a knee, oh, we're so disrespectful. And my thing is this: I just want to know if um when the flag, when the national anthem is played and the flag is um raised, do you stand up in your house? I want to know that since we took it so far. I just want to know how many people stand up when you pass by that big giant flag at most Ford dealerships, um, or the um, what they call it, Auto Nation. Do you stop and salute? I just want to know because I'm just that's just how silly some the some of the things that we are saying as far as the disrespect. That's just how unreal it is because. That's no disrespect because if you're not stopping and doing those things, because as soldiers on post, that's what we do. So it, so there's no such a, there's no such a thing. I just I just feel like the people who have the most noise are the ones who are doing nothing. Who are doing that's all they're doing is barking up the wrong tree, making so much noise about stuff that's not important. And I want really how many even serve? Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, the ones that are making all the noise haven't served one day to, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. from what I can tell, because starting right with, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Trump, <laughs> he had bone spurs. Right. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. And we probably so, have some veterans that are you know, the ones who make the most noise don't know they haven't been there. They haven't mm -hmm. served. They don't, they can't relate. Mm -hmm. And all they're doing is speaking from, what others, what they think they're supposed to do so that they can somehow feel good about themselves and feel like they are patriots. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Uh, that That's uh, certainly my humble opinion, but, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying I, um, I happen to have, my husband is a vet. My father is a vet. Uh, I have been involved with Veterans Affairs for a very long time mm -hmm. because of the active role that my father takes in it. So I'm very aware mm -hmm. of what happens in terms of the noisemakers. A lot of the noisemakers don't good. have a clue about what they're actually making the noise about. Right. And one of the things that people don't even know is um, the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem, there's a stanza in there that's very racist, mm -hmm. very racist. So is that something that we should actually be respecting in the first place? I'm not so sure about that. And you know what? The so what things you, I would say, you, mm -hmm. she could be. OK, what I wanted to say up to the to the standard of the national anthem anthem in the second stanza. And I understand that people are OK. Why now? Because in order for change to come, we become aware. And even though the ones who are saying why now why now you didn't know either you know so stop acting like we did we were just history majors are out here when we see change when we see problems change and change and recognize that change needs to happen that's what we're doing that's how we're living and i also go back to some of the ones who with this democrat democrat and republic republican talk you have a lot of blacks moving over to the republican party then they want to say oh well the democrats didn't do anything for me well you know what the republicans didn't either is if you go back and count how many Republican presidents have we had in history versus Democrats, and if you also know a little bit about history, I don't know half of you was sleep doing um doing U.S. history in high school <laughs> because they taught you from the beginning of the presidents when the party shift. But now all of a sudden, because we decided we want to vote in this election, we want to talk about oh they was never for oh that was because you don't know history. Go back and do U.S. government, please somebody and it would it would tell you that it wasn't it was it was the uh, platforms of the parties that crossed and that's how you it so we know people it wasn't democrats that was enslaving you the platforms changed the what the, the belief changed not the individuals the belief changed so you just need to go back and just do a little bit of u.s history find out some things and then start then try to talk on it and i believe the knowledge is power I'm telling you, knowledge is power. And some of my own people, and I talk directly to you, you're held back because you 
choose not to learn something. And if somebody tells you something, go back and research what they told and then research the research that told them. Like I tell people, if I'm going to, if I'm going up a, a challenge with you, I'm the one. I'm not reading the headlines. I'm going to read the body of the paper and then I'm going back to look at the, the sources. I want to know who wrote it. I want your, your um, scholars. I want to know because that's how you defend opinions. We have a lot of opinions that we are just throwing around as facts and they're not facts, they're opinions. And, uh, and unfortunately, our people, the cultural black people, we have a lot of undoing to do. And if we just yeah. understand that, it's a lot that we have to undo because of being taught wrong. And so it is up to us. It's up to us to read a little bit, to share a little bit of truth and knowledge. What do you think? I agree with you. And so much of the problem is that we have not been educated in history. You said we were sleeping in class, mm -hmm. but that's not what happened to all of us. Right. Some of us were wide awake, but what we were being done, what was happening was we were not being educated from truth and fact. We were being indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. that's a real big difference than um, what they have, what, what they told us and what they shared with us. Our daughter had a, a history book, U.S. history book mm -hmm. that was quite thick. And in that U.S. history book, I believe there were nine pages all together that had anything to do with Black people. And there was mm -hmm. over 500 pages in that book. Oh. So everybody talks about Martin Luther King and everybody talks about Abraham Lincoln, but that's the extent of it. Right. It doesn't go beyond that. There's very little in there about Harry Tubman. There's very little in there about uh, the 1619 it, there's just so little information that has been taught to our our students, black, white, Hispanic, Mexican, no matter what, in the public school system, it's yeah. just not being taught. You know, Angie, and I'm glad you stepped, you um brought that up because I'm I was always looked at funny when I say this, and you're probably gonna look at me side eyed too. I just didn't think that okay, segregation when we were segregated. I didn't think that being segregated was that bad. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm from this platform of education now. I'm not talking about when we, okay, let's let me go back. Because my mom, when they were in school, it was an all black school. They learned so much because they had black teachers teaching black children about black people, you know? Yeah. And then the issue with segregation is okay, now you say that we're equal, you want to integrate us into the schools. But when you integrated us, you integrated us into your way of thinking, your knowledge. You didn't give us. And that, and that's the problem that I had. It's not that if you had just left us alone over there on that track by ourselves, like you said, and allowed us to, to thrive and stop. Every time we come up, you put the, put the um, glass ceiling, well, I should say the bombs on us, Black Wall Street, Oklahoma, Tulsa. We know these things. Yes. Rosewood. We, these things are real. If you didn't do that, we would have had an opportunity to be our people and know our stuff. That's the issue that that so that's so when I say segregation, so because people are, uh, I'm a, that's because they took our our culture from us. And the more we integrated, the more we stopped being who we are, the more we started being like the others, including our hair, the way we dress, the way we talk. And granted, we have some very proper talking black people. We don't, we don't talk slang, or we because you know that's not that's not us. Because our family taught us proper. What was proper? Right. You know how do you carry yourself? How do you hold your head up high? Ladies, be ladies. And that wasn't taken away from you. It was teaching you how to have pride in yourself, how to yeah. believe in yourself. And see when you when you start taking that stuff away. Little by little, it starts now. We're, now, what are we doing in, in 2021? We have to teach our young girls that black is beautiful. We're sitting up here. We have to do all these affirmations to, for us to believe in who we are. Even me at 45 years old, I still have to do it because of the brainwashing stuff from way back then. But my mom and them, who had less, don't have to do this. Because they were their parents, it was instilled in them everywhere they went, whether they went from church to school, home, it was instilled who you are. 
you are a powerful person no matter where you came from you can do anything that you want to do but we lost it because we're too we're, we're I'm, I'm not saying it's just that but that's kind of like the way i feel you know i told you i'm very transparent i see monica green says exactly i totally agree thank you I, monica's from uh, monica alabama yep oh it just popped up i totally agree and so if we can get back some of that pride i went to a funeral um a week ago yeah and we'll everybody get to know him later because when we start doing our lives and we do, when we go syndicated and yes angie and i are going to go syndicated it's it's so funny now that you know we, we used to call it cable tv or uh what what did you say the um mainstream regular tv but now we got internet tv so we'll be going we'll be going <laughs> to internet tv i'm excited about that in, in a couple of months so y'all yes yes so so i just want to jump in for a second mm -hmm. and what you have said is very valuable information i know you said that i was going to be looking at you side eye but not necessarily and that is because what happened is we were segregated mm -hmm. But the difference is not equality. Right. The difference is equity. Mm. And our systems, our African American systems, mm -hmm. have not been provided with the same resources. Mm -hmm. So that caused a real problem. Right. And if you look at things today, mm -hmm. in 2021, Sunday morning at 11 a.m., well, not 2021, let's go back to 2019. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2020, nobody's been in church, but 2019, Sunday segregated. morning at 11 a.m. is the mm -hmm. most segregated hour mm -hmm. in the world. In the world. So it's important for us to know a couple of things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We need to know our history mm -hmm. and we need to make it our business to go get our history. Right. Because we have not been taught it. We don't like to read. Many of us don't like to read. And reading <laughs> is the foundation that will change everyone's life. If you read and you stay on top of your reading and you read if the books that are that are written from a historical perspective, a true historical perspective, mm -hmm. you will learn so much and things will begin to look differently to you. The, the perspective that you see in situations and circumstances will begin to look very different to you. So it's important that we take up the, the mantle of teaching our children to read. We have this computer in front of us. We're walking around with computers that in our hands, in our pockets, in our handbags. Our cell phones are massive computers now. These smartphones are computers. They really are. I mean, they are what they are. They have lots of information and we must learn to understand the value and the importance of accessing that information and integrating that information into our daily lives. And it doesn't happen if we're waiting for someone else to teach us that it's not going to happen. It's important that we take up that mantle. Right. And you know, the days of sitting around in the living room and chit chatting and talking and the barbershop and all that stuff, those days unfortunately are gone. And without those days, we don't get a chance to grow and learn our history the way we used to. Church, we're in and out. We 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 there and we're out. We we don't sit down and talk about the issues that churches, the particularly the black church used to talk about. We're not doing it anymore. These are the things that we must make a concerted effort mm -hmm. to really bring back into the mainstream of our families and our homes to teach this generation what it is that past generations have gone through, number one, because they don't know, they don't get it, and they won't get it until they get someone who actually sits down and talks to them. Gone are our, our elders, the grandparents, the great grandparents. It's up to our generation. And that's where we are falling down because we don't have the same fervor towards educating our children that we used to have. And we don't push them to read, 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 read. That's what we must do. Until we begin to the practice of reading on a regular, 
we'll never know what's going on. So that's that's my point. I want to go ahead and if it's okay with you, she could be. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling in some questions. If anyone has questions or comments that they want to bring forth to the table, let's hear them. Let's uh, put them in the chat box and we'll bring them over so that we can talk about those things. I, I like what Miss Sanders says. If we don't teach our children the fundam fundamentals of reading, we will simply fund a mental case. Hmm. Things that made you go, hmm, remember that back hmm. in the day? The last that was pretty good, girl. That was profound. Yes. Profound. Hey, but, I like I, but I want to ask y'all, well, can I well, listen to says it? that reading is fundamental, and indeed it is. Yes. We have to teach our children to read. That's, That's the thing that brought us through freedom from slavery. Had we not learned how to read, we wouldn't be free right now. So reading is key. So I see Nicoria Cooley is saying that for the younger generation, how do we educate ourselves? And I think we just spoke to that, Nicoria. She could be, how about you jump in and answer that question? Okay, well, to the younger generation, first of all, one thing we have to learn is to read, but not just read. We need to learn how to comprehend reading. Understand what you're reading. We have a... Um, teammate that said it took him six months to read a book because he didn't understand the words but what he did was got a dictionary and learned what he was reading see but see we do push reading we do but comprehension is just is i is absolutely important you have to understand what you read and also listen to the older ones so right now we do have a lot of matriarchs that are leaving leaving they're gone the big mamas the mud is the um the what the, i don't well, i don't know what you might call your own grandparents but that but they're gone and then a lot of us now these this new 40 40 what is it 45 we don't want to be grannies you know so listen to those who are willing to give information but i can say be, when you're listening listening with an open mind and still research what you hear and i'm not talking about ask google hey google i'm not talking about hey siri because Google has something in there that we don't know about. It's called a Google Scholar, meaning that that is scholarly information. Now, what, and I will say this, although it's scholar information, you still have to read it with an open mind because you have to understand things are written not for us. Okay? So you have to, like um, one of my old pastors say, eat the meat and spit out the fat. Yes. Get what you can get and spit out the rest. All right. So and then take a interest, take an interest in learning more about our history, who we are as a people. Absolutely. And, and then one other and thing. I also want us to understand that when we are reading, it's also an effective thing to talk about it. Right. To sit down with others and and go back and forth, have that dialogue so that you can see it with a with a different eye so that you can see ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. And the other part of this is we spend so much time playing PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch and Wii and whatever. Mm -hmm. We play these video games and, and we have lost the art of going outside mm -hmm. and getting the sunshine and getting the just getting connected to nature and all of these things play a part in because when people are connected to outside they're writing about nature right. so that writing then impacts the reading that we do mm -hmm. so it's important that we recognize that our children the younger generation all of us we need to spend some time outside and i'm guilty i i don't particularly like being outside so I'm very guilty of it. And we have safety issues. So we can't really be outside because we got to be safe. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things working against us. But if we make a concerted, intentional effort, mm -hmm. we can do things differently. And that's what we need to do. We need to be very intentional about our actions and to have them focused on knowing that we must grow. We must grow in this area. They are not going to do it for us. We must do it for ourselves. Absolutely. 
I see Debbie Moore is saying, we have to lead by example. Read with and to our children and have discussions with them. And Debbie, you are so correct. That's where we have fallen down in, in recent years. We just don't do it anymore. Right. Many of us don't do it anymore. It's a lost art, a lost cause. And we really must begin to do this. We have to do it. It's the difference between us surviving and thriving. And we really have to be disciplined about it and be intentional about it. I can say that, um, you know, I tell you, I tell everybody I'm very transparent because this girl right here, I hate to read, but I love to know stuff. So the only way I'm going to know it is do what? Read, you know? So which one outweighs the other? The fact that I, I want to know more, so I have to pick it up. And what I've done, because I am such, I'm an audio learner. I have to hear it. I didn't care. I was like, what can I do? Because I wanted, I, and I like to hold books, right? I, did y'all get that? I don't like to read. I'm an audio learner, and I like to hold books. I'm telling you, they all contradict themselves, right? But that's, that's what made me up. So when I was trying to figure it out, I said, okay, I got it. I want to know. I want to read. I want to read, but I just, just don't want to take time to just read a book. But I like to hold a book. So I have so many <laughs> different ways to listen. I have Audible. I have the Kindle. I have the Google Reads. I have it all because I like to hear. When I hear it, I'm I'm just good. I used to be one of those people that I could sit in class and as long as I have a lecturer, I don't have a problem. And if I turn around and go back and read what you just told, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, you know what? You can't even stop me. But I love that. And my kids got um, have it like that too. They listen. But I teach them the three touches too, my um, sons, the three touches. And that's what, what we're getting away from in schools because they teach to test instead yeah. of teach to retain. So when you're taking notes, you have to hear it, write it, read it. But now we're on the computers to where we're just plugging in the answers. And so they're not even, they're not even comprehending or, un you know, this just, okay, this is filling a blank, which is not good. I'm, my son now is in the sixth grade, and I just cannot believe that he has not had a project or a reading list. We always had summer reading. We, when we moved to South Carolina five years ago, I was outdone that my that my high schooler at the time did not have a summer reading list. And I'm like, okay, so we wonder why <laughs> we're behind. And now they don't even write because everything's on the computer. So now we lost. We lost we lost reading and now we're, re we're losing writing. So what are we going to end up with? And we're losing grammar. Exactly. Everybody's texting and they're texting in code. They're not texting words. They're texting SMH. <laughs> yes. And I, and some of them, they're not, they're not texting words, whole words. Mm -hmm. So we're losing the art of grammar and the art are, the art of writing and mm -hmm. and spelling because spell check is just I mean the the oh. spell correct is just oh my gosh up. so I, I mean think, it's just all kinds of stuff going on I think I'm like all the kind, I see, uh, that one the last yeah. word saying telling us something mm -hmm. about uh LKR I'm not sure IKR I know right I know right <laughs> see I didn't even know that one yep. <laughs> Angie I know yeah. some of them but I, I didn't even know that one didn't catch mm -hmm. that one so it's important that we learn to continue these traditions with our children they're important arts that should not be lost mm -hmm. and we must be willing to take time out just 15 to 20 minutes a day, sit down with your kids and have these conversations and, and get them inspired. We have to get them interested in this because we live in a world where we're not interested in that. We don't care what happened yesterday. That's what they're saying. I, I don't have to deal with that. I don't know anything about that. And I tell you, when that came to the forefront for me was the time the election time when it was time for us to go out and vote that's what really threw me off because mm -hmm. we had people saying oh no i'm sitting in that line man you must be crazy i ain't getting in no three-hour line and all this stuff and here we are 
people died. People were hosed down. They had dogs put on them. We had all kinds of things happen to us so that we could secure the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And now here we are, what, two generations later? Mm -hmm. I guess it's two generations. Two generations later, and we have no interest in that. Mm -hmm. if, if I vote, I vote. If I don't, I don't. And we got to do better. We have to do better as not just an African-American, but we have to do better as the human being, the humankind. We just ha we have to do better. Mm -hmm. And it just bothers me when I don't when when I hear things like that. It just really it just gets me. One of the things I do. Every election day, we go as a family. We take the little one. We, we make sure everybody sees us going to vote. So it's an important thing. And particularly when my girl when my girls turn 18, it was like, come on, we getting up early on this. This your first election. We getting up and going five o'clock in the morning. So that's what we did for. I have had two daughters now that have been able to vote. So we made that a big event for the first time that they voted. So it's just important that we continue to do these things. And I, I don't want to get on that soapbox, but I do want to just take a couple of more uh, co comments, if there are any comments, any questions that we need to address. And then before doing that, because we only have a couple of more minutes, Chica, you brought up a good thing that I would yeah. like to see us do. Mm -hmm. Let's put together a bibliography of books that are important for, our, for us to read. And oh, put that out. Listen. And we will do we will seek email addresses from you so that we can email you a PDF of a bibliography or a, a, we'll we'll put together something that will give us a good list of books that should be read that we need to make sure that we as a people read. So let's work on that. We'll get to that. Uh let's give ourselves a week to do that. The universe loves speed. So let's give us a week to put together a bibliography of some books that really need to be read and shared amongst our community. Okay, okay. one book that um, for sure that everyone needs to read, and I recently read it, audioed it, was Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Have you read that one? Yes, that one and Think and Grow Rich. The reason, the reason why it may not have a historical uh, facts for African Americans, but it has tools that we need. It's what we need to grow and to become better. Because see, when we become affluent, that's when we can be a blessing to others. And we can't be a blessing to our community if we have not yet found affluence for ourselves. And as we look to seek wealth, we really need to do that because it's not necessarily about big cars and big houses, but it's about what can we do for our community. The, um, the reason why I chose like Outwitting the Devil first is because I recently read that one and it was an audio as we was traveling back from Alabama. Uh, on YouTube, it's free, guys. If you want to Google Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, and it's a conversation that he's having with the devil. And before you get into thinking, go grow rich, I think you should get into this one first because this book tells us where we are and why. It talks about poverty. It talks about how you control people. It talks about all those things of the mind, which is very, very important when you notice, when you look at what's going on right now in the world, what's going on in our communities. Why are we where we are? Why do we have churches on every corner, but yet we have the most crime, most hate there is today now than anything? Quitting was, yeah, quitting was not an option. I thought that, yep, quitting was not an option. Was not, it is not. That that's uh, that? Dr. Ray's book. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Quitting was not an option. Yeah, that's where I was like, that's where I love the girl. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah. cool. And I also like the IKR. That's cool. I, that was funny to me. So thank yeah. you for that. She, she says it, it was a joke, but that we, <laughs> but that was good. Keep us on our toes, right? Yes. And when I listened to Outwitting the Devil, it was like it really, it really touched in the in the places to where okay, so. When you think about, remember I was telling you about the Willie Lynch letter, the control, your mind. Why do, why are we like, 
and it's really deep if you really listen to it and open your mind up it's really deep about about the mind why why we think the way we think what's controlling us to do the way the things that we do and once you get to that level think and grow rich absolutely and we'll put several more out there because as i'm reading listening i like to like i told you i, I like to touch them I, I love books i i don't know i love books but i want to hear them and i like to hear them by the author that wrote them so i'm a little bit you know a little bit of, uh you know I'm the same way i try to find try to find the author that wrote the book i want want them to read to me and then i listen and now and then i also want to read them <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'm going all the way back to the elementary school where your teacher used to read till you hold the book and be like, okay, we're reading along. Yeah, that's me. I like to go that go to do that as well. So yes, oh okay. And I was gonna say, yes, Angel. That was that was you typed it in. Yes, the Willie Lynch letter, um, to read that as well. And the courier, when you ask uh, oh yes, yeah, she she listened to them. That's my daughter. So when um, I started it, uh started it listening to her, we had a, it's an eight-hour drive from Alabama, so we was coming back. And so I put it in. I didn't. I didn't even think they were listening. The two of them were in the car with me, but she was interested. And so, with that being said, after she, we listened to that. We also listened to. Um, oh my goodness! I don't forgot the name of. I didn't see she's gonna type it in that she remember. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is later. But it's it's another one because it's like a modern and an old. But they're both talking about the mind. That's why when people say when you say outwitting the devil. Don't be afraid of the title. It's so it's such a good book. I think that's one of the best I've, I've had. I've read and uh, so far, so so far, I got a lot to read. And I do agree with with the the book thing, the book thing because we do need to know some greater books. And one thing I have learned is how we have been some of the books that we just haven't been introduced to, like Think and Grow Rich. You know. Something mm -hmm. that should have been introduced to us long time ago, I would think. But we have to be in certain rooms to get certain nuggets in order to have. And now we have to. Now that we have them, we have to share them with everybody because it yeah. does no good to take it to the grave. It does absolutely no good for me to take my knowledge with me and not leave it behind. I'm dying empty. I'm trying to put everything out on the table. But I'm gonna tell you like this now. I can. I can take it to the water. I can even bring that water to you, but I cannot make you drink. That's mm -hmm. the beauty. So that's something you have to do. That is so true. Angie, I want to see if you notice something here. I, I see see your mug. Let's take a moment out for you to, to talk about that mug. Oh, I look, I thought I was gonna be late on the call tonight because I'm down to try to hurry up and get it done. But yes, this is us. This is our um conversation with us. So Angie and Yashika, isn't that pretty? So I would give Angie one, and I wanted to ask you: Did you have any of, of your books left? Me? Yes, because I I don't know if our audience noticed you're a best-selling author. Yes, I do have have books left. Okay, so this is my book: One Good Sip at a Time: Seven Guiding Principles for Spiritual Growth, and it can be found on my website or it can be found on Amazon. So. Uh, this is a book that was written um, during this pandemic, during the time that I am, was battling back from having s some real issues with mental health and depression and anxiety and worry and things like that that are not healthy and not helpful. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this book as part of my recovery. So uh, it is a good read. It's a quick read. And I would like you to hit me up if you would like to get a copy of it. I'd be happy to autograph it for you. You can go to my website and do that, Dr. Angie Gray. And that's Gray with an A, or it can be found on Amazon as well. So thank you very much, as she could be, for allowing me to have that shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's one more thing. For the next person who likes and shares, we have to like and share. And we have we do have Dr. Dr. John Gray behind the scenes. So Dr. Gray, the first person who shares, I am going to gift them one of Dr. Angie's books. One person now. So can you so whoever like and share, can you see it in the back, in the background, in the back, um, what's say the back stage back? <laughs> That's an awesome idea. It could be. And yeah. Dr. Gray is on the case. Because that would be a blessing to someone and as a matter of fact a blessing to everyone but whomever gets it that's a blessing to you on this day so the first person who likes shares 
like and share. Is that right? Can we if we're doing that from that from this platform? We could actually yeah. share the um share the thing. Can we see that? I think it comes up as a share. I don't I don't know because we have it so does. many okay, we have so many different um platforms, guys, to do live from. We have StreamYard, we have Big Live TV, we have YouTube, we have all kinds of tools. <laughs> so yeah. Just bear with us as we're Try working. To touch as many souls as we can. Absolutely, absolutely. The last per is the person who All right. is the first to share. So she is the one who will receive a an autographed copy of can't see it. Can you see it? I one, see it. One, one good seven, seven, time. Time. seven guiding principles for spiritual growth. So that will be going to Mr. Lasper. Thank you so much. All right, Miss Sanders. And I will right. take care of that um shipping and then, handling for uh, you. Yashika B mm -hmm. mentioned that you were interested in collecting mugs. Mm -hmm. So that we can feature those mugs on the show. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, I love mugs. Not just any mugs, coffee mugs that have sayings on them. I love the ones with spiritual or um affirmations, and I make them as well. So if some, we're gonna start that in the future. Where if somebody has a mug, their favorite mug that they want to send me, we'll start featuring the mugs on our show. And then maybe we may have to wait till we get syndicated because then we also have them coming in. So I know that people. So as you're outright, well. COVID. But anyway, you might be at a store or something. Maybe you might be um doing something where you and you see a mug and say, okay, she would like it. You might want to grab it now because that's gonna be pretty hot. I love, love, love coffee mugs. I love them so much. That's the reason why I learned to make them because I love the different sayings, like the different looks. And let's say I was saying, say like and share. Yep. So this one will be coming soon. And that's available. That will be available through your Etsy site. How no, we're going to know it's going to be exclusive to Conversations for the Soul. We will leave it right here. So I will leave it right here. You, okay. you can share, like and share, and let people know we have some good stuff coming. We just gave away a book. Somebody's got a book. We have coffee cups coming. You have coffee cups coming to me. We have a lot going on. Great conversations to get you started, to get you through this next week. So we come to, uh, and if you have anything that we want to talk about, we would love to know. And Oh, and also... Guess what? Guess your two favorite hosts are going to be speaking with our teammate, which is actually his platform. And he was so he honored me and act. Power Talk 2021 Virtual Summit is happening February 20th at 2 p.m. Go ahead and like, I'm mean, excuse me, go ahead and lock in the date. We have them on our websites. This particular um flyer, save it, share it. This is going to be something that you don't want to miss. We have, uh, we know that you're liking our uh, conversation for the soul, but when we get together, you have powerhouses in the house, like Dr. John Gray and his wife, Angie Bay, got Pele Hunkin, Mr. John Ugulu, and myself, and a, and a couple of others that are going to bring it down, bring the house down with great conversations for you to grow on. We want to talk about real stuff, power stuff. We know that we're in the in the world where everybody's being on um, positive. But we have to also be keep reality in front of us too. We want to stay as positive as we can, but we also got to stay with reality. We have to give those tools that can help help us move to the next level. Now we know everybody's not moving at the same pace. We we understand that too, and everybody doesn't have the same path. Therefore, we have a little bit for everybody on this show. And then Dr. John, which is he's in the back, for, he's our teammate. He has a couple of podcasts that he does, and we want to just make sure that we give shouts out to everyone so we can. Spread the word, spread the word, spread the word. Absolutely. So we are in a community together. We consider this to be our tribe. So we need to really just work together to support one another. And this is a platform where we can do that. And I see that we have up on the screen, Living by Design, and that will be a broadcast that takes place beginning next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I am blessed, honored, and privileged to be the host of that show, Living by Design. And it is a show that will discuss various things, but most importantly, how we can live intentionally with purpose and on purpose so that we are able to just have some life hacks, have some strategies that will help us to be the best 
version of ourselves. So I'm looking forward to starting that. And I hope that each of you will join me for that beginning Saturdays at 7 p.m. And then also, uh, Dr. Gray is also uh, interested in giving out one of his books. Wow. So for another share, like and share. And he's going to autograph his book, Quitting Was Not an Option, and get that at, out to you as well. So I let's do another like and share, and we'll go from there. Oh, wow. Hey, that's awesome. Two books from two best-selling authors that just happen to be husband and wife. How great is that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> How great is that? And I mean to be blessing somebody tonight with that because I'm telling you, we have to start somewhere. And why not start with both doctors' books, Dr. Andy, Dr. Dr. John's book? Why not? Conversations for the soul. That's what we do. We talk about conversations for your soul to make you better, to just, just do better at living. Lillian Okech is the real oh, winner. Hi, Lillian. Lillian Okech, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, you for liking and sharing. And guys, the ones who have, have gotten the books, be sure to look for an inbox from one of us. Um, I think they call it inbox. You know, what do they call it? Message, DM? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Facebook Messenger. We'll there you go. We'll reach out to you, Lillian, uh, or you can reach out to us. You can find us on Facebook mm -hmm. under Angie Gray or Yashika Broughton Mac. And uh, just reach out to us on Facebook and then we'll go from there. We'll get, yeah. we'll make sure that we get your copy of your book to you. The yeah. last verse, same thing. If you could, please, please reach out to us on Facebook and we'll go from there. Thank you so much, ladies, for being willing to put yourself out there, like and share our uh, platform so that we can get these a copy of these autographed books to you. Thank you very much. She could be, we are coming to the close of this episode. Do you have anything for the good of the order? Yes, I would just like to let everybody know that you do not have to tear down anyone's kingdom while building your empire because there's plenty of room at the top. It's the bottom that's crowded. I love that. Those. Are <laughs> she said, "I need a mug." <laughs> yeah, said, I need a mug. I'm, I'm down with it. I understand. So, at this point in time, we just want to thank Dr. Gray for all of his help with us. He's in the background running the show for us, and he also donated one of his books. So, Dr. Gray, thank you so much for all of your support. You know I love you, so I, and we appreciate you, and we're grateful to have you as part of the Angie Gray and Sheikah B team, Conversations for the Soul. Yes. Uh, yes. At this point, I just want to say thank you to each thank and you. every one of you who have joined us, and if there's, if all hearts and minds are cleared, we're going to go ahead and sign off, and we look forward to seeing you next Saturday at 7 p.m. Monday broadcast and then Sunday at yeah. 7 p.m. for conversations for the soul. No, so you, you, please join us and also please interact with us on Facebook. If you are on Facebook, interact with us. You can also find us on YouTube under Conversations for the Soul mm -hmm. and various other social media platforms. Please join us by going please interact with us by going to our websites and Facebook, social media, all of those things. We look forward to hearing from you and we look forward to collecting topics that may be of interest to you. So if you have a topic that you would like us to bring on the show, please reach out to us and let us know what that topic is and we'll go, we'll we'll make that happen. Mm -hmm. Chica B? That's all for me. I'm signing off, guys. If that's, if that's it, do we have any other uh, questions or anything in the, in the backfield? Backfield. I promise you, I feel like I'm playing football and I don't. <laughs> so, if we don't. Oh, I, Love just, you, girl. I, I just want to see that go again. Yeah, this, oh, this, can we just do that intro thing again? That's why we're sitting there watching it. Can I just see it again? <laughs> so, woo! <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Nice. Nice. Good night, y'all. Good night, everyone.